Hello. So this is why small pleasures are a big deal. We're surrounded by some powerful ideas about the, the sort of things that will make us happy. We think that to really deliver satisfaction, the pleasure should be aimed for should be um, a few different things. So the first thing that we mentioned is people think that to deliver satisfaction, we should um, aim for something that's rare. We've inherited a romantic suspic um, suspicious of the ordinary, which is taken into the mediocre, dull, and uninspiring, and work with the corresponding assumption that things that are unique, hard to find, exotic, or unfamiliar are naturally fitted to delight us more. We also aim for things that should be that we think are expensive. We like economic endorsement. If something is cheap or free, it is a little harder to appreciate. The pineapple, for instance, dropped off a lot of people's wish list of fruit when its price fell from fell down, you know, fell uh, to unremarkable. Caviar continues to sound somehow more interesting than chicken eggs. We also aim for things that are famous. In a fascinating experiment, a, celebra a celebrated violinist once donned scruffy clothes and busked at the street corner and was largely ignored, though people would flock to the world's greatest concert halls to hear him play the same pieces. We also aim for things that are large scale. We are mostly focused on big schemes that we hope will deliver enjoyment, marriage, career, travel, getting a new house. These approaches aren't entirely wrong, but unwittingly they, collecti they collectively exhibit a vicious and unhelpful bias against the cheap, the easily available, the ordinary, the familiar, and the small scale. As a result, if someone says they've been on a trip to um, Bizile, by private jet, we automatically assume they had a better time than someone that went to a local park by bike. We imagine that visiting the Uvizi Gallery in Florence is always going to be nicer than reading a paperback novel in the back of the garden. A restaurant dinner at which a lobster um, thermometer, thermometer is served sounds a great deal more impressive than a supper of cheese sandwich at home. It feels more normal that the highlight of a weekend should be a hanging gliding lesson rather than a few minutes spent looking at the cloudy sky. It might feels odd to suggest that a modest vase of lily of the valley, the cheapest bloom of the forest, might yield more satisfaction than a Van Gogh original. And yet, the paradoxical and cheering aspect of pleasure is how weird and promiscuous it prov proves to be. It doesn't neatly collect in the most expensive boutiques. It can refuse to stick with us on fancy holidays. It is remarkably vulnerable to the emotional trouble, sulks, and casual bad moods. A fight that begins with a small disagreement about how to pronounce a word can end up destroying every benefit of a five-star resort. A pleasure may look very minor, like eating a fig, having a bath, whispering in bed in the dark, talking to a grandparent, or scanning through old photos of when you were a child, and yet be anything but. If properly grasped and elaborated upon, these sort of activities may be among the most moving and satisfying we have. Appreciating what is, at, is to hand isn't a slacker solution. It isn't an attack on ambition, but there is no point in chasing the future until and unless we are better at being more attuned to the modest moments and things that are presently available to us. More fundamentally, um, the smallness of the small pleasures isn't really an assessment of how much they have to offer us. It is a reflection of how many good things the world unfairly neglects. A small pleasure is a great pleasure in awaiting. It is a great pleasure which has not yet received collective acknowledgement it is due. Appreciating small pleasures means trusting our own responses a little more. We can't wait for everything that is lovely and charming to be approved by others before we allow ourselves to be enchanted. We need to follow the muted signals of our own brains and allow that we are onto something important, even though others may not be in agreement. We are dominated by striving for better relationships, work, and personal lives. Restless, we think, in so, so, yeah. 
we think with success. Nothing should be good enough for long, but in so concerning ourselves with unattainable levels of excellence, we overlook more modest pleasures that are closer to home. So that's just a quick thing I read on um, why small pleasures are a big deal. And to me, it's these other things are nice. Having something that's rare, expensive, famous, large scale is nice. I want it to happen. I will work to make it something like that happen. But in the meantime, I'm going to enjoy the small pleasures. Like the dr job I have right now It's not my dream job. But it's a job in the right direction, and I enjoy it. So it is one of my small pleasures. But thank you for watching.